Greetings and salutations everyone, my name is Andrew Kirikoff and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to be talking about the fantasy football hidden gems of week 6. Yes, it's that time of the week. So for week 6 of the fantasy football season, I scoured the earth in search of these powerful hidden gems in order to complete my already deadly fantasy lineups. Now if you're familiar with the fantasy gauntlet, you'll understand that these 6 gems, yes, they're powerful separately. But as you bring them together to complete the fantasy gauntlet, you will be able to rain fantasy points all over your opponents this week. And that's exactly what I plan to do. I exactly explain, I'm going to exactly explain where I've found these hidden gems for week six and how you should use them in order to help your lineups out for this coming week. So without further ado, before we begin, I just want to thank everybody who's subscribed and continues to support my channel. Yes, I will get to your questions. I'll get to them before Sunday for sure, without a doubt. So, you know, just be just be ready for that. So let's get right into it, shall we? All right. Hey, everybody. How's it going? Oh, 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 my goodness. Look at this. Look at the jewels I have on my hand. The powerful fantasy gauntlet. It has already been assembled. And I'm here to tell you all where I have. I've went and scoured the earth in order to complete this, where I went to find these powerful gems. To begin the week, we went, we found the Power Stone in Indianapolis under the name of Chester Rogers. Now, why am I talking about Chester Rogers? A guy that, you know, prior to the season wasn't really considered a fantasy option within the Indianapolis Colts offense. Well, here's the thing. With T.Y. Hilton being out for the last two weeks with his leg injury, um, there's been a huge gaping opportunity within this offense to have a relevant wide receiver, right? T.Y. Hilton is majority of the targets and majority of the production at the wide receiver position for the Colts. We've known that for years with the combination of Andrew Luck and T.Y. Hilton. Now, while T.Y. Hilton is out, Jack Doyle himself, who is a target monster, is out. You know, Andrew Luck has turned to uh, opportunities such as Eric Ebron, Naeem Hines. And now that we've begun to notice, Chester Rogers for the last two weeks has had 11 targets each of the last two weeks and eight receptions for each of the last two weeks. He's been extremely efficient. And I think this coming week against the New York Jets, he is for sure a hidden gem. He's a guy that is going to be on many of your waivers. And honestly, with all the injury news that continues to come out and progress this week, he is honestly a really good flex play in PPR leagues. You know, with eight receptions each of the last two weeks, this gives you a little bit of a boost. I mean, think about it. Eight receptions, 80 yards. That's what he's been averaging, right? That's 16 points in full point PPR, okay? And 12 points in your average half point and then eight points in standard. But that's regardless, okay? If you play standard still, I'm sorry, okay? You need more points. You need it to get more exciting. You need fantasy options for the gauntlet. It's Chester Rogers this week, without a doubt in my mind. I mean, just look at this thing. You see the purple gem? Mm, fantastic. So... As of right now, it's Chester Rogers as the Power Stone this week. I mean, here's the thing. I've already mentioned it many times this week, um, and I, I keep harping on it. Andrew Luck has thrown the ball 60-plus times each of the last two weeks. Now, that might not seem like a lot to many of you, but that is an extreme, extremely high number. You know, the, the stat that I saw was that if Andrew Luck continues on this pace, of continuing to throw the ball 60 plus times a game. He's going to break the record for most passing attempts in a season breaking uh, Matthew Stafford, who is the only person that has thrown over 700 uh, passing attempts in a season. So the way I see it, there is going to be an opportunity for Andrew Luck. He, they're going to throw the ball. I mean, even with Marlon Mack coming back, I still have trust within this offense to, you know, air it out. And against the Jets this week, who are not a great defense, they give up the seventh most fantasy points to the wide receiver position. I think Chester Rogers is a great hidden gem. That is why he's on this list. And we will move on. Okay, so for the Space Stone, I went to Jacksonville this week in order to pick up good old Blake Bortles. Now, many of you are not like me. You don't trust in Blake Bortles. But if you've been around this channel for a while, you'll... You'll already know that I like Blake Bortles a lot. Now, many of you may be thinking, you know, Blake Bortles is a garbage quarterback. 
We saw it last week. He turns over the ball way too much. He's not efficient. He's got such a good defense. He should have already won the Super Bowl by now. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. Here's the thing. We're here. We're talking about fantasy football. I don't give a give what he does in the playoffs. I couldn't care less. But in fantasy football, Blake Bortles, as of the last two seasons, uh, this past season in six point per passing touchdown leagues, he was the number 13 quarterback. Right in the in the uh, year prior, he was the number eleven quarterback, if I'm not mistaken. So he's around that mid tier quarterback range on a yearly basis. Yet nobody gives this man the respect that he honestly deserves when it comes to fantasy, except for me, because I know where I get my gems from. They're always ripe and they're always they're clean on a weekly basis. So here's the thing: thus far this season, Blake Bortles has thrown for 375 yards three total times so far. I mean, that's incredible in itself. Yes, he's going to turn over the ball. We know that already. As, you know, Blake Bortles owners, okay, or people that can potentially start Blake Bortles, you should already expect him to turn over the ball. That's a given, right? There's only one game this season where he didn't turn over the ball, and it was in that 9-6 to uh, game versus the Titans, okay? Other than that, he's turned over the ball every game. That is nothing that you should be surprised about. And honestly... It's going to probably happen this week against the Cowboys. But the way I see it, Blake Bortles is still a really good quarterback. In six-point-per-passing touchdown leagues, this man has averaged 23.12 points per game. That's fantastic. That's what you want. You want a 20-point quarterback. So why not go with Blake Bortles this week? He is my hidden gem of the week in the Power Stone slot. I mean, yes, I've said it in the the last couple weeks, this Dallas Cowboys team comparatively to prior years, has been actually pretty good. Even with the absence of Sean Lee, I still, even with that, I don't think Blake Bortles is going to be fantastic. I don't see him doing 40 points. But because of the fact that it's in Dallas, right? So we have a closed stadium. There's no weather um, to get in the way, especially with that hurricane hitting down uh, south. Um, There's not going to be any weather issues. That's fantastic. That's what you want for your quarterback. On top of it, you play against the Dallas Cowboys who honestly cannot pass the ball for their lives, right? So Zeke, yes, he's going to get his fantasy-wise, but Dak Prescott's going to have some trouble. With the short field advantage, because the Dallas Cowboys are going to continuously have to punt, I see Blake Bortles having short fields. I see him having very good opportunity. D.D. Westbrook, Keelan Cole, T.J. Yeldon. And honestly, with Fournette out, they're a better team. They're not forced to have to run the ball and feed Fournette. They've been playing pretty good offensively. Yes, you know, last week, when you turn over the ball five times, yes, you're not going to win. But he still had 20-plus fantasy points because of that uh, 40 rushing yards and that rushing touchdown that he had. He ended up to have, you know, he salvaged the week in garbage time. So, Blake Bortles, he's my space stone. And that's basically it. Let's move on. We're moving on to the reality stone. Now, the reality of the situation here in San Francisco, because that's where I went to collect my reality stone, is that Marquise Goodwin? Mark, yeah, Marquise Goodwin. Marquise Goodwin is honestly the only healthy wide receiver on the 49ers right now. Now you might be thinking, Marquise Lee is a healthy wide receiver. How is that actually possible? I thought he was hurt. Well, here's the thing. As of right now, Pierre Garcon did not practice today, right? And he's got multiple injuries, and the likelihood of him playing is very um, is very low, be- even with. Uh, the fact that it's a Monday night game against the Green Bay Packers. The news right now is that Pierre Garçon will most likely not play. We've already gotten information and word that Dante Pettis, the rookie at Washington, is going to be out for Monday night. And on top of that, Trent Taylor, okay, according to the NBC uh, beat writer out in San Francisco, the news is that if Trent Taylor is to play, it would be a huge surprise to the 49ers coaching staff. So what you're telling me is that Pettis, Pierre Garçon, and Trent Taylor are all going to be out this week, and the only starting wide receiver is going to be Marquise Goodwin? I mean, sign me up. Why wouldn't I do that against the Packers' defense? I mean, look, we saw this past week, C.J. Beathard, right? He's not a complete garbage can. With, um, With a Shanahan offense, right, and him being somewhat comfortable within it, they're going to move the ball. And the fact of the matter is, even Pierre Garçon this past week was able to haul in 14 targets. So why wouldn't Marquise Goodwin be able to do, you know, if not the same? 
I see Marquise Goodwin, because of the reality of the situation, having a pretty good week. And that is why he's one of my hidden gems for week six of the fantasy football season. Guys, and you know, what is, I'm telling you right now, the likelihood that he is sitting on one of your waiver wires right now, you got to go pick him up right now during this video. You're watching this. Go watch and go pick him up. Okay. Because I guarantee you, people are not paying attention and they think Marquise Goodwin is done because Jimmy Grapple's out. He's been injured. He's going to be the only wide receiver out, out there besides Kittle catching the ball. And especially with Brita being out, they are going to have to pass the ball. Right, because Alfred Morris eventually is going to slow down. But anyway, Marquis Goodwin, people, look for him this week, I'm telling you. All right, we're moving on to the Soul Stone. Now, the Soul Stone that I've mentioned in the past um, requires a sacrifice, as we all know. And I'm going to be sacrificing good old Peyton Barber in order to get Ronald Jones a part of the Fantasy Gauntlet as the Soul Stone. Now, what exactly does that mean? Well, here's the the plain facts, okay? I'm just going to put them out there. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers, they play against the Atlanta Falcons this week, who by all means has been one of the worst, if not the worst defense in the NFL thus far this season. They've given up the third most points to the running back position. They've given up the fourth most points to the wide receiver position this year, right? They have just been awful defensively, and that's why they are 1-4. Yes, their offense can score, but they can never stop anyone defensively. Ronald Jones this week going against a, I mean, an extremely easy matchup. Um, I think with the sacrifice of Peyton Barber is going to be good, right? Peyton Barber, as of the last four weeks, has only scored 17.1 fantasy points in half point PPR scoring. 17 and a half points in four weeks. That is, I mean, that's underwhelming to say the least. It is embarrassing for a running back that has so much opportunity to absolutely do nothing with it. Ronald Jones was brought in at the Tampa Bay, I mean the uh, the, Sh- the Chicago versus Tampa Bay game. He was deemed active and he played in that game because they know they cannot sustain having a running back that's just absolutely terrible, averaging two yards per carry. That that's not going to work. So going forward, it's going to be Ronald Jones. I'm not saying 100% start him this week. That is not exactly what I'm saying. I'm just saying he is a hidden gem if you are in a very, very bad situation where you have a Brita and you have Devontae Freeman and you're looking and you have Leonard Fournette and you're looking at your bench and you're thinking, um, I don't have any other running backs. I got Rojo though. Start him, put him in there. But otherwise he is a very, very hidden gem. And it's very I mean, here's the thing. Ronald Jones success, um is going to be contingent on whether good old Peyton Barber plays or not. If they continue to hand the ball to Peyton Barber, well, then we're not going to have a Ronald Jones successful week. But I think because of the recent use of Ronald Jones, finally bringing him within this team, actually having him active for a Sunday, they're saying, okay, it's time to move. We've gotten Jameis back onto the uh, under, under the center. The way I see it, Ronald Jones, in a very easy matchup, should have... Pretty good success in fantasy this week. That's why I like him as one of my hidden gems this week. So, the last, well, not the last, the second to last hidden gem we're going to talk about here. We're going to talk about the time stone. Now, we all know that time, time is valuable, right? Money is time, time is money. And Antonio Callaway this week might just be money. He might just be amazing. Now, why exactly is that? Well, Antonio Callaway um, at home. In Cleveland, we'll be playing the San Diego... Oh, my goodness. The Los Angeles Chargers this week. The San Diego Chargers. Man, I I won't be able to fix that. That is just ingrained in my brain. Um, So here's the thing about Antonio Callaway, right? We all know, you know, he's a rookie out of Florida. Had his off-field troubles. Nobody cares about that. What we care about is that this guy is an absolute burner. He's got the speed to actually make defenses hurt, Right? Going against the Los Angeles Chargers this week, the Cleveland Browns will be a little bit uh, um, banged up, and they will be missing wide receivers this week. Now, they're going to already be missing Rashad Higgins and um, Derek Willies. Now, uh, or Will, yeah, it's Willies. There's no way it's Willis. Um, here's the thing: Rashad Higgins, Derek Willies, those are two wide receivers that were taking snaps from Antonio Callaway. 
going into week six of the fantasy football season, it's only going to be Jarvis Landry, David Njoku, and Antonio Callaway. You cannot tell me that Ricardo Lewis is going to come and take snaps away from Antonio Callaway. That's not going to happen. Antonio Callaway is going to get his reps. He's already proved prior to the season that he is a game-changing wide receiver that if given the opportunity, can make a big play. This coming week, week six of the fantasy football season, they're going against the Chargers, who against deadly speed has not proven shit. They cannot stop speed. What happened against Tyreek Hill, right? What happened against Tyreek Hill? 38 fantasy points in week one, right? He burnt him over the top. They couldn't do anything. What happened against Brandon Cooks? Brandon Cooks had seven receptions, eight targets, 90 receiving yards. The Chargers cannot stop deadly speed. I understand. Cooks and Tyreek Hill, they're better wide receivers than Antonio Callaway at the moment. But if given the ample opportunity, which I think the Cleveland Browns will be able to do, because we all know the Cleveland Browns at home, completely different team than on the road, especially defensively. So they'll be able to stay in this game. I think Antonio Callaway, because of the injuries to the other wide receivers, is going to have a better opportunity. He is my time stone this week. And by all means, he could be... I mean, it only takes one play with this guy. He could be a very good sneaky wide receiver play because it takes one play, boom, in PPR. He's got himself a 70-yard touchdown. He's got 13 and a half fantasy points, and he makes himself his week, you know? Everything else on top would be gravy. So that is my time stone. We're moving on to the last hidden gem that I want to talk about. We got here Chris Godwin, our second Tampa Bay Buccaneer on today, or yeah, at least today's. Um, hidden gems list, I guess. Is it a list? No, it's not a list. But either way, here's the deal, okay? The Mind Stone, you know, if you're cursed with knowledge, you begin to understand, wow, I can already see how this game's going to play out. Jameis Winston, yes, he's going to turn over the ball early, but they're going to be able to score whenever they want, right? The Atlanta Falcons defense, as I mentioned before, is giving up the fourth most fantasy points to the wide receiver position, and they're giving up points in bunches. They'll just allow you to walk into the end zone. So why is Chris Godwin one of the guys that I think is going to be pretty good this week as a hidden gem? Um, he's been low-key really good this season. Not a lot of people talk about Chris Godwin. Um, thus far, he's averaged 10 points per game in half-point PPR scoring leagues. In four games, he has scored three touchdowns. Yes, this was all underneath um, the Fitzmagic you know, era of the season. But the fact of the matter is Chris Godwin continues to be a a vital part of this offense. You know, when the Atlanta Falcons scheme up how they're going to play defense this week, do you think they're going to be preparing for Chris Godwin or are they going to be preparing for Mike Evans and the speed of Deshaun Jackson over the top? That's the way I see it. I think as Chris Godwin, as the number three receiver, you know, uh, Last season, Adam Humphreys was that number three receiver. He's, you know, eventually disappeared off of the face of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers offense. And it's Chris Godwin who has stepped up. I see Chris Godwin this week in a very, very, very advantageous matchup with, you know, Jameis Winston at quarterback who's going to let, you know, the ball loose. He's not he's not worse than, um, what's his name, Ryan Fitzmagic. But he's not, you know, he's not going to be Oh, I'm going to drop 50 points this week. It's a possibility, but I, I doubt that happens, okay? But as of right now, I see Chris Godwin as a very, very good uh, start as a hidden gem, as we all know. It's undeniable. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers, they're going to have their opportunities this week. And the thing is, Tampa Bay Buccaneers defense isn't much better, right? We saw them get embarrassed by Mitchell Trubisky, of all people. So worst case scenario, you have yourself a shootout, and Chris Godwin is going to be involved in this thing and he's going to make himself fantasy relevant he's a guy that you could put at your flex perhaps your wide receiver three in ppr leagues and that's where i like him this week anyway i want to thank everybody for watching we've gotten through the week six fantasy gauntlet hidden gems i mean just look at it let let me give you that up Ooh, look at that baby you see me hey guys hey no 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 no. yeah look at that we're looking clean over here aren't we so Anyway, thank you everybody for watching. I appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed yet and you like the content, click the subscribe button. And until next time, I'll see you guys. And um, 
I'm going to go ahead and do this really quick. And, you know, it's really hard to move a mouse with this thing. 